my name's Eric with Brunswick Firearms. Today we're going to be talking about the Springfield Echelon. One of my favorite firearms they have came out with. We will be talking about the trigger pull length, the trigger pull weight, the reset length on the trigger. We'll be talking about uh, field stripping this gun. I'll show you how to do that. Changing the back straps out as well as um, removing the central operating um, group on this firearm, which is really neat. They did a phenomenal job. There's no pins holding it in. I'll show you that, how to break it down. You can break it down, remove the central uh, operating group without needing a, a pin drive set or anything. So you can do it right there at the firing range, get a good cleaning on your gun right there. But anyways, let's jump on in. And as you can see, cardboard box, standard Springfield cardboard box. There's a flap here. Uh, you would just lift it up and open. You can see that it comes with a soft case. Um, the soft case does have the zippers here. You can see there's two holes right there. When those two zippers come together, it makes one. So you can actually put a little padlock on this to lock your firearm up inside of this. Um, looks like there is also a target here from the factory where they did the test firing. And on top, you'll see who the inspector was, the serial number of this firearm, and the distance that they were. They were at 10 meters, and this was his grouping at 10 meters. Um, there's also no hard copy of the manual that comes with this. It is inside of here. You'll see the QR code. You would actually scan that code, and it would take you to a digital format online is where you would be able to read your manual, which goes over all the details of the gun. Also, it'll explain your warranty information and that kind of stuff. Um, there is a speed loader that comes with this. Um, I actually had it out earlier, checking it out. So pretty, it's actually pretty nice. So let's go ahead and set this stuff to the side. Actually, let me go ahead and show you what else is in here. If you were to flip this little flap up over, you can see there's all kinds of stuff down here. There's different size back straps. It comes with three back straps. These are probably a little different than what you're used, used to seeing. You can see there's a pin that comes out at top. Um, this should be the small and the large, and then the medium should be on the firearm already. There is a lock that comes with this firearm. Um, basically, it's a cable system. One side of the cable comes out of the lock, and you can run it down your magazine with the slide pulled back and come out of the chamber and then lock it back. Or you can rack it back, slide lock it, and drop the uh, cable through the magazine well, it would come out the bottom and then you would lock it. Both techniques prevent the firearm from being able to be used. Um, there are, I don't remember if I told you, there are two magazines. One's a 20 round magazine and one is a 17 round magazine. The 17 round magazine should be in the firearm already. This is the 20, but it also comes with another magazine butt plate here. So you can actually remove it the butt plate off the 17 rounder and put this guy on there in its place and then you would have two 20 round magazines which is pretty cool um, also inside of here are two pin sets this is so um, depending on what brand of um, optics you use for the red dot you might have to change the pins out but it does come with three sets so this is the gauge we will be using for the trigger weight um, so that's, this is made by Wheeler, which is pretty good products. Um, again, these are snap caps. These are designed so you can dry fire your gun safely. I really high, highly recommend these guys. I use them all the time, especially if you're practicing with your firearm. The inside of this is a spring, and when the firing pin hits the center here, basically what happens is that spring absorbs all that momentum coming in from that firing pin, preventing damage to it. So. We'll get to that stuff later. Let me go ahead and slide it down. Let's open it up and take a look at this guy. Basically, unzip it. There it is. Again, this is probably my favorite gun that Springfield has came out with. I really love this firearm. So first thing we're gonna do, drop the magazine, make sure we are unloaded. We are going to rack it back, put the slide lock in place, remove the flag. Look visually. So. We are clear and free and safe to operate this firearm. All right, so first thing I noticed on this firearm is that the slide release is, or not the slide release, I'm sorry, the slide, the racking system is very easily to use on this firearm, which I like. There are deep serrations on the front 
part and the rear part of the slide, as you can see here. Also, the rear end is flared out, which also helps with the grip when racking this firearm. So all that put together, really, it's very smooth racking system, very easy to do. So also, I noticed a texture on the firearm. Uh, the texture is not too aggressive. It's actually very comfortable when you're holding it. Uh, this little hump back here actually really fits your hand nicely. Not only is there texture on the grip, but also on your thumb placements on both sides, there is grip too for your thumb as well. Uh, also, this firearm is 100% ambidextrous. You can see the slide release slash lock is on both sides, as well as the magazine release button there is one on both sides already. So you do not have to flip nothing around on this. This gun is ready to go no matter if you're left-handed or right-handed, which is very awesome. This does have the three dot night sights on it. This particular model does. Now you can also get the one that has the U-notch on the back. Some people like the U-notch, some like the three dot sights. That's all personal preference. Um, you know, either way, you'll, you're gonna have a fine fire, firearm. Optic ready, cut out. So basically you would remove these two screws, pull the plate off, then you can put your red dot on. Again, it does come with different pin sets to help you with that. All right, so on the front bottom, you will see there's a Picatinny rail down here and it's four notches. Makes it really nice so when you, you know, put a red dot or a light or what have you, uh, you, you got a little bit more of options there with a four notch of what to do there. But overall, this is a, uh, it's, it's a very nice gun. You can see that there are no safeties, thumb safeties on this model. On this particular model, it has the trigger safety. Very common on your Glocks, uh, some of the other firearms as well. Basically, the idea is that you cannot pull this trigger backwards unless this little mechanism coming out the center of the trigger is pressed in. Then you can fire the firearm. So if this trigger was to get caught up on something on your clothes or something like that, and it just grabs the edge of the trigger, it could not go off or fire unless the center part gets pressed downwards or engaged. So that's the idea behind it. Now, as with anything, I always tell people, safeties are man-made, they can fail. So, you know, always be cautious with your gun with that in your mind. So let's go ahead, I'm going to before we field strip it and take out the control operating group, I'm going to do a couple of uh, dry fires on this thing. We're going to see what the trigger pull length is, the reset length, and then we'll go back and, and see what the weight of the tr trigger pull is. So first thing is let's go ahead and take our snap caps. I'm going to go ahead and load them up. Again, these are, they're not real ammunition. These are snap caps designed to dry fire your firearm safely. So let's go ahead and load one up. The spring in this is very stout. So we're gonna use, I got one loaded in here. We're going to use the speed loader. This speed loader is very easy to use. You can see the front of the bullet on the magazine. On the speed loader, one side is open, one side is closed. The open goes towards the front of the bullet. So basically you just put it right on top, just like that. I hold mine with a palm. There's a little thing here for your finger to catch. And basically you just push downwards you can see it pushes that bullet down then you can drop your next bullet in so we're going to push down so it pushes that bullet down slide that in release the speed loader and then finish pressing it back again we're going to press down on that one presses the bullet down slide our third one in release it and then finish pushing it back and we're going to do our last one here which will give us four rounds so push it back, remove it. So we have four rounds in here so we can start doing some uh, trigger pull and see what we have going on. We're gonna load this back in. So the magazine is inside, loaded with four snap caps. Let's go ahead and load one in the chamber, slide back. So we have one in there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this close to the camera when I do the trigger pull. So hopefully you can hear the click and kind of see you know, how far my finger pulls this trigger. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna put my finger on the trigger. We're gonna disengage the safety on the trigger so it is pressed in. So now we're gonna do a trigger pull. So here we go. Not much there. There is, uh, the trigger pull is extremely short. Really like that. Um, let's see what the reset is compared to that. 
So let's go ahead and get one out. So we got the next one in, set that to the side. You can see I still have the trigger engaged from when we pulled it. Um, that's so I now can release it slowly and see where the reset position is to tell us how long the length is on that reset before we can get a second fire off. So here we go again. Hopefully you can, you can hear the um, click in there. So here we go. There's your click. And there's your pull. So the, the reset length is longer than your your initial pull uh, but the the pull is extremely short but so um this firearm should be a lot of fun for rapid firing um, both the reset and the pull are relatively short uh very short all right so let's see what the weight is i like to do the gauge we'll get our our gauge here made by Wheeler. Um, there's all kinds of different brands out there. I just particularly use this one. I do like to do it twice and take an average because sometimes it fluctuates a little bit. So let's go ahead. I'm going to rack this again, get our third, our third snap cap loaded in the chamber. There we are. Now let's turn on our gauge. All right. So basically right here, this yellow piece up top is it's, that's what gauges the weight and then on the screen it'll tell us what our our pull weight was so let's go ahead and get it on there now remember this has the the trigger safety so that you have to have it on that mechanism to um, be able to fire it the, the firearm to pull the trigger back but you have to be careful with your gauge not to get it too far low don't get too low on the trigger because it won't give you an accurate reading. It'll, it'll, it, it just, for some reason, I get a better reading when I'm center. I usually like to be a little bit above center of, on the trigger, but in this case, because of where the pivot point is on the safety, we're basically gonna have to be right dead center, maybe a little bit lower. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. Let's see what we get. Here we go. Fairly light. All right, so let me, Reset that one, put another one in. All right, let's see. Let's do it again. So I'm getting around a three, looks like about a three pound trigger pull, which is really light. Um, between that and the length of the trigger pull in the reset position, this gun will be a lot of fun with rapid firing. Uh, should be extremely well with it. So, all right, let's get the last one out. Slide locks in place. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tear this gun down. We're gonna field strip it. Um, once we field strip it, I'll show you how, again how to remove the uh, fire group in there, the central operating group, and uh, which is really neat. And then we'll come back and show you how to change these back straps out. So. Let's go ahead, I'll show you how to field strip it. Now, when I told you this gun is 100% ambidextrous, the only thing that is not is the breakdown mechanism. It is only on the left side of the gun. Everything else is mirrored. Uh, so that's the only thing that is not. But, you know, firing, operating a firearm, everything else is ambidextrous. All right, so here we go. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this lever and it's gonna be stiff because this is a brand new gun. And we're gonna turn that 180 degrees down and then the slide should come off. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, gotta add a magazine now. All right, so 180 degrees. After struggling a little bit, it was a little tough. Uh, everything else seems really easily, but that was pretty tough there. So again, make sure you remove the magazine out. Uh, we're gonna do the slide release and this slide should come completely forward. So there we are, slides off, frames here. Um, I, I do notice that it, the gun is fairly dry so sometimes when you get your firearm from the factory, 
sometimes there's too much lube or not enough lube. In this case, to me, there's not enough lube. It is really dry, especially where the rails ride. Um, so you might want to give it just a little touch up with the lube. Uh, but yeah, fairly nice looking. And again, this whole chassis in here, uh, I'm going to show you how to remove that here shortly. But let's go ahead and finish fill stripping our slide down. So you can see the spring with the rod here. Basically, you're going to press down to relieve the tension. And that rod and spring will come out as one piece. Set that down. And then your barrel basically lifts up and out. So there's your barrel. There is quite a bit of lube on the barrel here, but everything else is pretty dry. So that's how you would field strip it to clean your firearm. Okay, now to, we're gonna put the slide back together and then we're gonna remove that uh, central operating group. So basically uh, up with your slide upside down, open in there. You can see this notch is up here on the barrel. It's pointing up. It kind of goes down about a 45 degree and then it just kind of drops into place just like that. Uh, you will see on here, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a little notch right here. And, and basically this round part is going to seat down into that. So let's put the barrel back in. One side is smaller than the other side. The smaller side goes in this hole towards the front of the barrel. So smaller end goes in there. And basically you're gonna push back and press down so it's back in there. All right, let's talk about the central operating group. So the fire control in this gun, it's it's phenomenal. Like I said, the, it's, it's lightweight, trigger pull, very short pull, short reset, it's awesome. As you can see, there are no pins in here. So you do not need a pin drive set to tap out the pins or any of that stuff. Um, basically all you have to do is to break down here you would pull this lever actually comes out it is a little tough getting it out so you kind of got to wiggle it and work it out so we're going to do that right now Let's see if we get her coming out Oop. and then you basically going to kind of turn it and, and pull it is a little tough but once it hits the right spot it'll come out so that's something you're going to have to play with to work with um you kind of got to wiggle it and turn it until it hits the right points and then it'll just come on out. Now, to get the control operating group out, <clears throat> you do have to disengage the, um, you don't want to pull the trigger, but the safety mechanism must be engaged or disengaged. I guess you have to press it in. So you're going to have to press that in. This group will kind of pull up or forward just a little bit to, to, to bypass where the notches are because there's the back of it kind of seats in place like that and then you would pull it forward allowing it to come up and out so uh, bear with me with this I haven't done it too many times um, they sometimes can be a little tricky but let's see so we get her forward so we got her forward and then we're just gonna pull it out come on. There we go. She's out. Again, I didn't have to drive no pins out or anything like that. Pretty cool. And these should be, let's see. Now that, the trigger, or the trigger down here, this, all the mechanisms, most of this looks a little bit uh, lubed up. And by the way, this is striker fire, just so you know. The mechanisms back here are a little dry, so I would lube those up. But that's pretty much all there is to this guy. Now, I'm just looking here. So this is serialized. So if you were to have or buy one of these to replace it and have it shipped in, you would probably have to ship it to an FFL dealer since it is a serialized item, just so you would know that. I know Six Hour has that. Um, it's the same way. When we get them, we have to log them in. Uh, but as you can see, it's, it's, I love the way that's set up because now I can really give it a good cleaning. I didn't have to come home and get my pin driving set or any of that stuff. I can do it right there. Now, putting this back sometimes can be a little bit more tricky. Um, and I'm going to try to show you the best I can on the camera. So this silver uh, pin right here on the bottom side, I don't know if you can see, but it's flat. The top of it is rounded. The bottom is flat so you have to make sure that's turned where the flat is facing downwards 
Uh, very important that you do that uh, and make sure it is centered. It's centered in here as well because if it's too far out one way, then obviously it's not going to go down because it's going to hit the side of the, the frame. So make sure that you do have that kind of centered and, and the flat part of that pin is facing downwards. So basically, the way you would do this, there's two notches up front here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but these tabs right here, it, which is basically your, your um, yep, how about this? on the front of the, the chassis here, these are gonna fall down into that those tabs right here where they're cut out. So it's gonna kinda of go in like that and then the bottom will press down. You do again, once you get the trigger down in there, I'll show you, see if we can get this in the first shot. Okay, so we have it in there. Make sure again, these, the, the silver pin here, the flat is facing down. Make sure it's pretty centered. We look good there. So let's go ahead and push it down. Now, once you get it down, you are gonna to have to, again, press the trigger safety in to allow it to press all the way down. So. There we go. So now she's back in. So basically, it's kind of hard to show because it's got to be all in one movement. It's very hard to show you on the camera. But again, you do have to disengage that trigger safety. You don't pull the trigger all the way back, just the safety part. You would you would press that uh, to disengage it. And then it'll drop down and then it seats back until you can see through there, right here. Now, this part can be tricky again. You can see, when I, hopefully you can see, one side is kind of cut diagonally right here that's because if you look inside of here you can see a little looks like a little hook in there hopefully you can see it uh, looks like you can see it right there on the back side of that hole just looks like a little hook so basically you have to get that part on there so it can get past it so we're gonna put it in the hole that cut part where it was slanted you just kind of got to work it and press it until it goes. Let me pull back out and make sure I got it there. there you go. And once you get past that, and it can be a little difficult in the beginning. So now we got it going. Once you get it going, then you just have to work it. There we go. So I'm past it. And now I find it easier if you look on here, there's a little, hopefully, let's see. See that cutout right here, right on there? There's a little cutout. Um, that little hook piece is gonna fall inside of there. So I found it easier, once you get it in, I point it up and I rotate it back towards the back of the gun and press it in at the same time, and it should catch that and you'll hear it there it went. So now we're good there. So everything's looking great. Now we can put the slide back on. Uh, again, I, I have this pointing downwards because remember when we did it, we had to turn 180 degrees pointing downwards. Let's go ahead and put the slide back on. So there's notches. You can see notches here on the slide and then these tabs would actually right here would go inside of those. Uh, same thing in the back, there's right here, there's little tabs and they would fall as well. Actually, those the slide will be in front of it and then they'll, they'll push in. So let's go ahead and put that on there just like that. Then we're gonna press it back, put the slide lock in place to hold it back and then our little breakdown lever here, we're gonna just twist it till it pops in place and then we're gonna let her down. I'm gonna put a dry cap in, a snap cap in to dry fire. See what we got. Make sure we're getting fire. So it's in there. Yes, so everything seems to be operating normal now. All right, let's talk about the back straps. 
because they are different. Uh, you can see the pin on top. You can use your finger to do this, um, or you can get a tool. I would not use nothing sharp inside my mag well because you do got to go inside the mag well. So the first thing you're going to do, we're going to remove the magazine. And there's no way I'm going to be able to show you on the camera, but you would actually go inside of the well. If you feel the back side on the bottom here, on the back side, you'll feel a square. And as you can see, here's this little square part right there. That's what you're going to feel. And you're going to press that in with your finger and then it should slide out. So here we go. I'm going to reach in. I feel it. Okay, I pressed it and I heard it, so it disengaged it right off. There you are. Now you can change out your back strap if you want to go smaller or larger. Um, we're going to put the same one back in, the medium one, just because that's how this firearm comes. Uh, and it is brand new, so whoever has it or buys it, it'll be just like it is from the factory. On here, you can see these two tabs, and you can see it's cut out those tabs are going to fall in those cutout parts right there. And then we're going to press it forward until this little square lines back up in that hole. Once it does, you do have to give it a little press forward and you'll hear it snap into place. So let's go ahead, put these on. Oh, we got to put the rod in first and then kind of up until you get those lined up. There we go. So you can see I got the rod going in. I have it flat. Now we're gonna press it forward. Now you can see it's still loose. See how it'll come undone? So you really have to press it forward until you hear it. There it went. So now it's it's locked in place. You really gotta kinda of press it. And you'll hear it, you'll hear it click when it seats. That little square seats in place, you'll hear it. Um, so there we go, the Springfield Echelon. Very nice gun, I really like it. Probably my favorite one they came out with, a lot of unique features on this thing. A lot of the features on here are still pending patents, uh, but they have really, really done a fabulous job on this firearm. So again, um, my name's Eric with Brunswick Firearms. I hope you enjoyed this video of the quick overview and unboxing of the Springfield Echelon. If you did appreciate the video and you got some information out of it, um, you know, please like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel. That is the biggest thank, thank, uh, thank you that we can get. Uh, again, if you have any questions about it or something else you're wondering about the, the Echelon, you can always drop a comment below or feel free to... Uh, you can email me as well. But um, again, my name is Eric with Brunswick Firearms, and thank you for watching.